Hello and uh, welcome back. For those who haven't been here before, my name is Justin urquhart Stewart, and this is my little weekly look at key things which are going on and may be of use to us when we're all doing our investments. This week I was going to look at a particular element with regard to a, a great American in, uh, uh, invention. It may sound rather dull to some, but actually I think it's a very, very useful investment tool, both for sophisticated investors and also for amateurs, those who are just starting. It is Exchange Traded Funds, or ETFs, as they often get shortened down to as an acronym. So these Exchange Traded Funds were originally invented in California by a bunch of geeks. And these geeks merely actually looked at the main indices that we were operating with. And of course, in the States, primarily that was the Dow Jones, which changes very rarely indeed. In fact, for many years, it was completely static. And of course, the S&P 500, which of course is a much broader index, and you've got the Russell 2000, and you'll know lots of other indices and sub-indices of those. And these geeks in, uh, in California looked at it and worked out that actually they could uh, virtually replicate uh, what the index was doing and operate that as a tradable instrument at a cost considerably lower than fund managers would do so to try and actually either copy that index or, heaven forbid, actually beat the index. Fund managers beating the index and also reduce the cost a lot, assuming you know what your fund manager's costs are. And it's not just the annual charge, is it? It's the spread, it's the additional charges, it's all those ones they don't necessarily have to declare. But that's for another subject. But ETFs, therefore, provide a very simple way to be able to get into a market. And it's not just American equity markets. You can get them now for bonds, you can get them for commodities, currencies, and more interestingly, around the world. So local uh, indices can be accessed. There are all sorts of different choices. Now, you have to be careful, though, of what you're looking at, because some of the indices may not necessarily be reflected completely uh, in your ETF. So if you have a global ETF, does that mean it's got all the stocks in the world? No, of course it can't. It actually selects from key areas. And before you know what happens, it's selected key areas that you don't want, or it's selected key areas that you actually want to have, but it's missed out some other ones. So you need to be very careful with that as to actually what you're being told. Once you've done that, it's, and you've got what you need, it's very suitable because you can buy it and you can sell it day to day as you wish, just like an ordinary share. And you've seen what's happened to the commission charges, and now you're seeing actually some stockbrokers actually charge zero commissions. Mind you, if they're charging zero commissions, be careful because they probably find they've then got a, uh, um, an administration fee, or one stockbroker I came across in Britain had an inactivity fee, which is brilliant. You get charged for doing something, then you get charged for doing nothing. Ridiculous. So ETFs are cheap and simple. A lot of uh, people get rather snippy about them and say, oh, it's just a tracker fund. It's a share, just like any other share. It pays you dividends. And it's easy access to a market when you don't know yourself which bit to actually access. So it gives you a broad access to it in one go. And you can even build portfolios out of them, as uh, certainly I've done in my career. And I think they've been very, very cost effective and done what I wanted them to do. The other thing to be aware of is sometimes you get physical ones and you'll get other ones which are called synthetic. Physical ones are very important when you're dealing with commodities. You'll get a, one which is physically backed by a gold. So somewhere there is a lump of gold which actually is reflected in your ETF. A synthetic one is one where, well, it's not actually a lump of gold, but we'll have a calculation so there's some money size set aside so it acts like gold. So you don't really know if it's there or not. Now, perfectly trustworthy firms seem to produce them, but I don't like synthetic ones because I don't, don't always understand how they're doing their calculations. And if you don't understand it, that's not your fault, that's their fault. So have a look at the physical ones rather than synthetic ones. So I think we're on good ground here because a lot of sophisticated investors like using these as a simple, easy access way to be able to, be able to build a defensive but a cost-effective portfolio. Good luck. Good searching. Keep well and look forward to seeing you again, hopefully, next week. Bye-bye.